All right, Algebra 1, let's get the final part of graphing these quadratics. Uh, everything we had so far was just based on translations and not really anything special going on. But now when we look at this full equation, we're like, man, there's a lot of stuff going on. This is this has this B value in it for all these. So that means we have to approach it just a little bit different. It's not going to move just up and down like all the other ones. Because again, we have a number, a linear term in the middle. So the, luckily there is a way around this. And you already know this formula, right? The X value, right? This is going to be our axis of symmetry, okay? So our axis of symmetry then uh, is going to be X equals this number. How do I find that number? Well, you take the beginning of the quadratic formula, right? Negative B and it ends with 2A. So if we leave out the whole square root part, that's exactly what we're going to do. So luckily, we've already talked about the quadratic formula. So this should be pretty easy to put uh, and store into your memory bank. So in this case, A is 1. Remember, there's an imaginary 1 there. I drew it in this time. B is 3. So negative 3 over 2 times 1. So this is negative 3 over 2. Okay, And that's going to be that vertical line that would be the middle of the whole thing. Okay, It's also going to be, what else does it say? The x value of the vertex, and we'll show you how to make that work today. All right, so A is 2, B is negative 2, right? And the sign goes with it right there. So negative, negative 2, and A is 2. So I get 2 over 4, which is 1 half, right? That's where we want to be. And the A value is negative 2, the B value is 4. So negative 4 over negative 2 times, or 2 times negative 2. So I get negative 4 over negative 4, which is 1. The other thing that we're going to take out of this, since it's in this standard form, is that if I were to plug in 0 for x, right, these would just go away, right? Because 0 times x, or 0 times anything is 0 plus another 0. So all I get is c. So this number on the end is always going to give me 0 c. So I can find the axis of symmetry. I can use the a value as a graphing pattern. And I can use the y-intercept. And I can graph all of these super duper easy without having to rearrange too much. So let's give it a try here. All right, so I have uh, negative b over 2a. So that's negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. So it's negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. So what I know so far is x equals 2, and my vertex starts with 2. So that means I'm going to go to 2, and I'm going to put this vertical line in here. That needs to be the middle, because that's the axis of symmetry. What I do with that 2 now is I plug it in at all of my x's. And that way, I can find out the other half of that ordered pair. So careful with this one. Negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 2. All right, 2 squared is 4 times negative is negative 4 plus 8 minus 2. And one thing I'm going to point out to you is that these are always half of each other when we're finding the vertex. Okay, so that means uh, negative 4 plus 8 is going to turn into 4 minus 2 is 2. So 2, 2 is the vertex. So I'm going to mark that 2, 2. So that gives me my vertex. I know that it should open down because A was negative 1. The other thing that I know based on all the vocabulary is that if I plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 2. So I can go to 0, negative 2. And if this is the axis of symmetry, if I go left to, that's where that point is at, my y-intercept. So if I go right to, I should have another point symmetric right there. So this is what my parabola looks like. Okay, I'm pretty close to my hitting that down one and over one. Okay, so I start with a sketch and then start to fill it in as I know that I'm making it look pretty good. Okay, so domain, all real numbers, range, right? Y is less than because it's opening down or equal to two, right? I'm going to use that Y value right there. So we get all those things taken care of. So continually review all the stuff with that. All right, let's try it again. All right, so I got negative B over 2A. That's going to give me my X value, X equals. So I got negative, negative 6, positive 6 over 2 times 1. I get 6 over 2 is 3. So X equals 3, 1, 2, 3. So I can do a dash line there. I also know the vertex starts with 3, and I have to plug that in to find out what happens next. So 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 4. Okay, so all I did was I took that 3 that we solved for, and I put it in these two places. 3 squared is 9 minus 18 plus 4. Okay, so remember, these are half of each other. So negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. So the vertex is 3, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
right? The next thing I know, if I plug in zero, what number do I get? Yeah, I get the C value, the one on the end. So zero, four, one, two, three, four. So that means the whole way up here. And that's three to the left. So one, two, three to the right. And I'll start to get this nice little sketch right here. And again, we'll tack on domain, all real numbers. And the range y is greater than it opens up. And the y value was negative five. All right, so now that we have that, we can start to ask you some of these, um, you know, flying objects. All right, so we're gonna have, uh, you know, we're gonna go to a basketball game and they're gonna take a slingshot and they're gonna launch these t-shirts all over the place. Okay, so we have an upward velocity, 64 feet. So it went in, um, the t-shirt's caught 35 feet above the court. How long does it take the t-shirt to reach its maximum height? And that's gonna reach its maximum height. Notice it's a negative like this. So we wanna know about its maximum height. What is that? That's called the vertex. Okay, so anytime we ask about uh, maximum or minimum in a word problem, that means vertex. And then how far above the, above the court is it at this point? So we want the time, and then we also want the height. So we're gonna to have to plug it back in. So here we go, negative B over two A. So it looks like there's super duper impressive stuff going on, but guess what? It's the same thing, negative 64, two times negative 16, negative 64 divided by negative 32. Okay, so that's two. So X, which is the time for this one, is two seconds. So it takes two seconds to get how far uh, up in the sky here. So we're gonna plug into negative 16, two squared plus 64 times two plus five. All right, so I get five. If I double 64, that's 128. Plus, I need uh, four times 16. Okay, so that's gonna be negative 64. So I get 64 plus five, so it's 69 feet. Okay, so they're gonna launch this t-shirt from down the court. And then after two seconds, it's gonna reach a height of 69 feet until it comes down and lands so that we get a free t-shirt. Okay, so. Here's another illustration using kind of the same idea. This one doesn't work out as nice, um, but I just want to show you like, you know, that's what happens, right? Sometimes we get decimals, we get fractions, all sorts of things happen. So here we go, uh, negative B over two A, okay, negative 72, two times negative 16, negative 72 divided by negative 32. So let's see what we got here. And they're both negative, so we don't have to worry about that. 72 divided by 32 is 2.25, so that's seconds, right? Because we had a couple of different things. What's the range of function? How long does it take? All right, so here's part of it. Now we're gonna take that negative 16, 2.25, and we're gonna square it plus 72 times 2.25 plus five. Okay, so here we go. Let's square it times negative 16. So we get negative 81 plus 72 times 2.25, 162 plus five, right? Somebody that's done a whole bunch of these just told you a little bit ago, these are always half of each other, right? So it's 81 plus five, so it's 86 feet. All right, so this time, uh, this, this, this team that was shooting these t-shirts, uh, they were able to launch it a little bit higher, right? So it took a little bit longer, 2.25 seconds, uh, and it reached 86 feet. And we can talk about the, the range and all those things, right? So we're gonna shoot it. It's caught 35 feet above. Okay, so it's a range, it, but it started, where did they start? All right, so it started at five feet. So my range, my Y values uh, has to be greater than or equal to five feet and less than or equal to, what was it 86 feet? Okay, uh, so we start to limit some of that uh, range, right? Cause it's not gonna go completely, right? So this t-shirt's gonna go up in the air and come down, hit that 35 feet, but up here at its highest point, 86 feet. Okay. So that's what we're talking about today. Uh, so we have a few of these you can try out. Uh, which numbers do I have? I'm gonna find uh, just the vertex for each of these and then some reasoning here. So we can use that as a basis to see how we're doing when we step into class.